In this video, I'll show you how to add a stepper motor to the stage of a Puma microscope for precision control of Z motion. I'll also demonstrate the use of the Puma control software to control the Z motor. Using a Z motor has many advantages. For example, use of a Z motor effectively eliminates the image wobble that can occur when focusing manually at high magnifications. With a Z motor, you can capture an accurate and repeatable series of images through a thick specimen at a sequence of evenly spaced depth planes. This is called a Z stack. Z stacks through semi transparent samples are blurry in the Z dimension, but they can be processed using deconvolution to deblur them to give clear 3D images, examples of which are shown here. Z stacks can also be collapsed into a single flat image of extended focal depth, as shown here. This is particularly useful for imaging opaque specimens where only the surface can be seen. A computer controlled Z motor, when coupled with automated image acquisition, provides the means for implementing autofocus. This is essential if you want to use the scope to automatically scan a large specimen area after motorizing the X and Y axes as well. The Puma Z motor system allows for easy and quick manual override for convenient manual focusing in cases where you don't require full automation. The gearing system of the motor acts as a brake which inhibits the characteristic backlash seen with non-motorized Puma scopes. Puma uses a small and lightweight system for Z motorization that satisfies the portability and affordability design criteria for Puma. However, using a motor is not always better for all purposes. There are limitations and disadvantages, such as increased cost, work, bulk and weight for adding a Z motor, the need for a power supply and electronic motor driver equipment. Also, using a motor reduces battery life. Before I move on to the next part of this video, I would ask that if you like these Puma videos, please take a second to support the project by clicking on the big red subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. If you have social media accounts, also please share these videos on them using the YouTube share button. Ok, now back to the rest of this video. The Puma Z motor system uses only cheap and widely available parts, namely the 28BYJ48 geared stepper motor, the ULN2003 stepper driver chip to drive its coils, and an Arduino Nano microcontroller to control the driver chip. The motor is connected to the fine focus gear with this 3D printed connecting gear and yoke, and the whole assembly fits to the base plate with this motor attachment bracket. It uses a standard MakerBot type end stop limit switch as a safety device and homing reference point. This adjustable 3D printed limit switch actuator probe fits onto the focus platform and activates the switch when the focus platform lowers to the set level. This prevents the motor from lowering the stage too much and damaging the focus gears. There is no physical upper limit switch. The upper limit is defined by the Puma control software once the stage has been homed downwards. All the various connections and power supply needs are dealt with with the portable battery operated Puma control console or PCC, which I'll be using for the demos in this video. The specifications for the PCC are all provided on the Puma GitHub page and I won't be describing its construction in this video. Of course, you're also free to use your own custom controller and software instead of the PCC if that better suits your projects. These are the parts and the tools you'll need to build the Z motor system. Details are provided in the video description. First, prepare the motor gear. Put the 5mm long PTFE segment and Z yoke components on the 16mm long M6 hex bolt and thread it into the top of the gear till the PTFE tube contacts the top of the gear.
Now, insert the two M4 grub screws into their holes at the lower end of the assembly till they are flush with the outer surface. Ensure the flat edges of the hole in the gear shaft line up with the flat edges of the motor shaft and mount the gear onto the motor as far down as it will go. Then tighten the M4 grub screws till there is no play in the fit. Take care not to over tighten or you will destroy the plastic threads you have just cut into the gear shaft. The next step is to pre-thread all these holes in the stage and focus platform with an M3 bolt to make it easier to fit all the components on. You only need thread the holes part way. You can complete the threading when you fit the actual parts. Split the 2mm long PTFE ferrule and fit this as a collar between the hex head of the fine focus gear bolt and the fine focus gear itself. This is important to prevent the gear from rising upwards and getting jammed when the motor is in operation. Jamming can cause the motor to stall, resulting in inaccurate Z height positioning and motor coil overheating. Now, fix the motor attachment platform to the base plate. First, remove the rear leg of the microscope. Then, remove the M6 nuts and washers from the coarse and intermediate gear axles under the base plate. Put the motor attachment platform in position and fix it in place over the two exposed M6 threads using the M6 nuts. You can use a washer for the intermediate gear axle if you want. But do not put a washer under the nut for the fine gear axle because this will result in the wrong length of the hind leg when you reattach the leg. Do not fully tighten the nut for the fine focus gear axle just yet. When it reaches the base plate, unscrew it by at least half a turn. For extra strength and stability, insert a 10mm long M3 bolt through this hole into the stage. Now, attach the motor to the motor attachment platform with the M4 screws and washers as shown. Note that the M4 nuts do not have enough space to turn when they are in position against the body of the motor. For that reason, you must hold the assembly steady by hand and turn the screw from the top aspect to tighten it against the stationary nut. This can be tricky for the hole near the intermediate gear because the gear partially obstructs the screwdriver. For this screw, therefore, you must use a thin shafted screwdriver as shown. Before fully tightening the M4 screws, ensure that the teeth of the motor gear are meshed in with the teeth of the fine focus gear.
Now unscrew the fine focus axle bolt until two flat sides of its hexagonal head directly face the center of the motor gear as shown. Once the orientation is correct, tighten the nut under the base plate, reattach the rear leg and press fit the yoke onto the hex head of the fine focus bolt. Turn the motor by hand using its own smaller gear to ensure this rotates well and also that it contacts the fine gear properly and rotates the fine gear well. Turning this motor gear by hand is the preferred method of manually focusing the microscope while the Z motor is attached. You should not use the actual fine focus gear because this can put undue strain on the yoke and cause teeth to slip. The Z motor is now correctly attached to the microscope. What is left is to fit the limit switch. To do this, pass two M3 screws through these holes in the limit switch and into the limit switch mount until the screws protrude through the mount. The longer 14mm screw goes into the thicker part of the mount, with the 10mm screw going into the thinner part. Now attach the limit switch on its mount to the side of the base plate as shown. You will be cutting plastic threads into the holes with these metal screws, so as always take care not to over tighten or you will destroy the threads. Before attaching the Z probe, insert a 10mm long M3 screw into the probe as shown. You will need to experiment to find the best length of protruding screw needed for you, but a good starting point is to have just under 7.5mm of protruding metal length overall once the bolt head is taken into account. Attach the Z probe onto the focus platform with the two 6mm long M3 screws using the holes provided as shown. As before, take care not to over tighten. Now ensure the probe is set to a safe length as follows. Without a slide on the stage, manually lower the stage till one of two things happens. Either the bottom of the coarse gear just contacts the top of the intermediate gear, or the limit switch lever is depressed by the probe till it clicks. If the two gears make contact before the limit switch clicks, then the screw on the Z probe needs to be screwed out some more. Ideally, you want the limit switch to click just before the two gears collide, leaving about half a millimetre of space between the focused gears. You are now ready to test the system. I'll take this opportunity to run you through some of the basic Z motor functions of the Puma Control software using the PCC. 
The detailed software manual that describes these functions is available for you on the GitHub page. First, connect up the motor and limit switch to the console, as shown. I'm also using the PCC to drive the lamp of this curler illuminator and the TFT screen of the AR projector, but you do not need either of these two modules to use the motor functions. In particular, you don't need the TFT screen, although it is handy for visual feedback of the GUI. However, I designed the software Audible Output to make it possible to navigate the basic motor functions by simple audible feedback alone. Details of what the audible signals mean are described in the user manual. So, when we first start up the system, we get the boot screen, which can only be exited by pressing one of the two console buttons as shown. For this demo, I'll press the Home button because the first step in using the Z motor is to home the stage. You can see it's telling us to remove any slide from the stage. This is so we don't crash the objective into the slide while homing and damage them. Now, press the joystick directly down till it clicks to initiate the homing procedure. This may take some time, and there are no button clicks you can use to interrupt the process, so if you need to stop, you must switch off the console or unplug the motor. Eventually, the limit switch will be triggered, and this will be the Z equals zero homed position of the stage. The GUI will show a capital letter H to let you know that the stage has been homed. Note that the software will not allow any Z motor functions to be performed until the stage is homed. If you set the limit switch as described in the previous section, then the Z equals zero position will be lower than would normally be used to get a specimen in focus. So your next task will be to raise the stage high enough for a sample to be safely placed under the stage without colliding with the objective. To raise the stage, simply hold the joystick in the up position. If you want to move faster, then click the joystick to the left once before holding it up. The course focus icon will appear on the GUI when in course focus mode. To return to normal focus speed, just left click the joystick again. This left click action on the joystick toggles between coarse and fine focus modes. When you think you've raised the stage enough, you can place a slide on the stage, taking care not to contact the objective with the slide. Now that you've got the slide on the stage, position it with some part of the specimen under the objective and focus the microscope using either the up or down action of the joystick. To learn about the various Z settings and advanced Z motion actions, such as the Z go to and Z sweep functions, see the user manual. But be careful when using these to set the appropriate settings options first so you don't damage the objective or the sample. For example, the default start position for a Z sweep is zero, which means the stage will travel to its homed position to begin the sweep. This will likely crash your objective into your slide if you're using a long high magnification objective, and can cause damage. You may want to practice these functions without a specimen on the stage for the first few times, or using a short low power objective, until you're sure you understand what's happening. If you want to manually focus the scope while a Z motor is attached, it's important to ensure the motor coils are not energized while you are manually turning the motor focus gear. The GUI will display an arrowhead while the coils are energized, regardless of whether the motor is moving or not. 
The default setting in the software is to de-energize the coils when there is no motion taking place. If, for any reason, that default is altered, to keep the coils energized even when stationary, you can manually de-energize the coils by simply pressing the Set button. Bear in mind that once you manually adjust focus, any Z position previously set or recorded, for example, for a Z go-to maneuver, will also be altered. Some final things to bear in mind are the effects of backlash and hysteresis. There will always be some backlash in the Puma stage mechanism. This means that when changing direction from up to down or vice versa, the motor will need to turn a fixed number of steps just to take up the slack in the system before moving the stage in the opposite Z direction. You can set this number of backlash correction steps in the motor settings menu. Another characteristic of the Puma Z stage is hysteresis. That is, there is some XY shift in the stage which occurs when changing direction from up to down and vice versa. The good news is that this hysteresis shift is very repeatable and predictable. So, if you want to Z scan the same spot on your sample, always approach it from the same direction. That is, always scan it from top to bottom, or vice versa, but don't mix and match. Be consistent. You now have all the information you need to perform advanced Z motion experiments with Puma, including the capture of accurate Z stacks. In future tutorials, I'll cover some practical experiments you can do with this, such as deconvolution microscopy and extended focal depth imaging. Thanks for watching.